Have you ever watched those relay races in the Olympics and wonder how smoothly the baton is passed between the runners? It's quite a sight, isn't it? Have you ever considered that delegating tasks effectively in the workplace is a lot like passing the baton? In this video, we're going to talk about how to delegate tasks effectively and why it's important. So let's explore why mastering this skill is essential for success in any team or workplace. First, let's understand what delegation is and why it's important. From a leader's perspective, delegation means giving a specific task to team members. This helps leaders focus on important work while giving employees more responsibilities. A Gallup study found that CEOs who delegate well make 30% more revenue. They understand they can't do everything alone and trust their team to get things done. This boosts productivity. When you delegate a task, there are several things to think about. Number one, make sure the person you are delegating to is a good fit to the task. For example, when you got a task that needs teamwork, it's a no-brainer to hand it off to someone who thrives in collaborative settings, right? I mean, why make someone who loves working alone suffer through group work? Here is where most leaders overcomplicate things because they assume that the only way to do this is by having a matrix with all the skills and interests of each person. But smarter leaders will do the following. One easy way to do this is to write down the tasks on your plate, then gather your team, go through the list and let them pick what they are interested in. By letting your team choose tasks that match their skills and passions, you are not just delegating, you are empowering them. It builds trust, boosts workflow, and gets everyone pumped up about their work. Number two, think about how difficult the task is. Some tasks are a breeze, while others feel like climbing a mountain. It's important to match the task to the person tackling it. If it's too tough, they will struggle and get frustrated. But if it's too easy, they won't be challenged. So finding that middle ground is key. You want it to be challenging enough to keep them engaged but not so tough that they are pulling their hair out. When you get that balance right, you set your team for success. Number three, make sure you know when the task needs to be finished. Understanding the deadline for a task is important. It helps you prioritize and plan delegation effectively. If it's urgent, you will want someone who can work quickly. But if there is more time, you have more flexibility in choosing who to delegate to. Communicating the deadline is key. It helps the person you are delegating understand the urgency and manage their time effectively. Plus, setting realistic deadlines ensure the task gets done without unnecessary stress. So when you are delegating, make sure everyone's on the same page about when things need to be done. It will save you headaches down the line. Number four, define the desired outcome. Delegating isn't just about handing off tasks. It's about giving clear context and tying them to the organization's goal or the why that is driving that effort. According to Harvard Business School professor Kevin Shatter, having clear objectives is crucial. This means everyone should know what success looks like, when it needs to be achieved, and how progress will be tracked. Before diving into a project, it's vital to outline the task, deadline, and success metric. This ensures everyone is on the same page and working towards the same goal. By setting these parameters, you align effort towards shared objectives, fostering collaboration and effectiveness. Number five, decide how much control the person doing the task will have. When you are in charge and giving out tasks, it's important to decide how much control to give. You want to let your team members take charge of their work, but also make sure that things are done right. This means finding a balance, giving enough freedom so they can be creative and take ownership, but also providing support and guidance when needed. You also need to think about the complexity of the task. Some jobs need more oversight, while others can be left to the individual. Being flexible in decision-making lets your team adapt to different situations and come up with new ideas. Number six, explain why you are delegating. When you are asking someone to do a task they are not expecting, it's important to explain why you are giving it to them. Alex Kavaulakos, I don't know how to say that, founder of The Muse, says it's good to tell them why you pick them and how it can help them grow. Show them that each task is a chance to learn new skills 
and take on more responsibilities. This way, they will understand the importance of what they are doing and feel motivated to do their best. Number seven, check in regularly to make sure things are going well. It's crucial to set checkpoints while delegating tasks rather than waiting until the end to check if things are on track. This way, you can catch any issues early and make adjustments if needed. During these checkpoints, give constructive feedback to help guide the person working on the task and ensure they understand what is expected. It's important to create a supportive environment where mistakes are seen as opportunities to learn and improve. Also, when setting expectations for the outcome, aim for around 60 to 80% of what you will have achieved yourself. This allows me and my detail-oriented mindset to accept a work that is not perfect under my standards, but it's a working solution to the problem I delegated. Number eight, provide feedback. In addition to keeping an eye on progress, it's crucial you provide feedback once the task you have delegated are finished. If a task isn't completed as expected, Offering constructive criticism is key. Your employees can use this feedback to improve next time. Conversely, don't forget to show appreciation and give positive feedback when tasks are done well. To ensure effective delegation, ask your team for feedback too. Check if your instructions were clear and if there are ways you can improve your delegation process in the future. At the beginning of your delegation journey, you will fail at delegating tasks. And if you don't handle your emotions properly, it could be the last time you delegate. So I recommend you watch this video where I explain about emotional intelligence. Thanks for watching and see you next week.